I really like small form factor desktop PCs because they can do nearly everything a full size computer can do while taking up not nearly as much space. However, there's one thing most of them lack and that is a five and a quarter inch disk drive or even any space to install one. For example, this NCR and this Tandy don't have any five and a quarter inch drive bays at all. And this compact does have a single five and a quarter inch drive bay, but it's taken up by the optical drive. And even if you wanted to remove this and install a five and a quarter inch floppy drive, you can't because this floppy drive controller only supports a single floppy drive, which would be the internal three and a half inch drive. Obviously these days most people don't use any kind of floppy disks anymore, but if you are a vintage computer enthusiast, it's very handy to have a five and a quarter inch disk drive because it gives you access to old games, software, and data you may have on this size of floppy disk. And it allows you to make use of computers which only have five and a quarter inch floppy drives or have a five and a quarter inch A drive and don't have a working hard drive, in which case the computer won't be usable unless you have some way to make a five and a quarter inch boot disk. Luckily, back in the day, there were a variety of external five and a quarter inch floppy drives available, such as this one that Radio Shack sold as a companion to their Tandy 1000 RL computer. And unlike their previous external floppy drives, which used a proprietary connector, this one plugs into a standard parallel printer port. And despite being sold by Radio Shack and designed to go with their Tandy computers, the only thing Tandy about it is the name that's printed on the front. This drive was actually made by a company called Micro Solutions, who made the long-running backpack series of external floppy drives, CD-ROM drives, hard drives, and tape backup drives. And in the documentation, Tandy says this drive will work with any XT, AT, or PS2 compatible PC with a standard IBM type parallel port. I've been wanting one of these ever since I got my Tandy 1000 RL back in 2008 and just now in 2021 I finally found one on eBay sold as is not guaranteed to be working and not including the power supply or driver disc. Luckily for me this drive is in working condition and you can download the driver disc for it from the TV Dog Tandy 1000 archive site and also they have all the documentation from it from their Tandy fax back archive and it takes a 12 volt AC power supply not DC so I was able to find this power adapter for it which works. I think this came from a modem and this is a standard Epson five and a quarter inch high density disk drive so if there was something wrong with this drive I would be able to replace it fairly easily. And that's the unusual thing about this, even though it was designed to work with XT class machines which normally don't have a high density floppy drive controller built in, because this is an external parallel port drive with its own driver software and controller chip in it, it's able to support high density 1.2 megabyte disks as well as 360k double density disks. On the back it has the permanently attached parallel printer port cable, a pass through for your printer, and there's the input for the 12 volt AC power supply. It says it requires a current of 850 milliamps, so this one amp supply is perfect for it, and also an on off switch. And there's the information sticker on the bottom, it's Tandy model number 25-1087. Sometimes printed as 250-1087. And yes, I noticed it was missing one of the retaining screws for the pass-through printer port, so I was able to find one in my box of screws. And its case is made entirely of metal. With the cover removed, we can see a very standard looking 5 and a quarter inch Epson floppy drive. It has the terminating resistor installed and it's set to drive select 1. And there is the standard card edge connector connected to this small circuit board which has the DC power supply providing 5 and 12 volts DC through the standard Molex plug and it has the controller chip hiding underneath there and there you can see the floppy drives in Epson SD 680L. And while I have it open I did remove this shield and clean the drive heads. With the drive plugged into power but not connected to a computer yet, we don't get any signs of life if we turn on the power. Not even a flash from the indicator LED, 
but that's normal. And if you want to use this drive with the Tandy 1000 RL computer, Tandy originally listed it in their catalog as may require modification to use it with the 1000 RL. And here I'll show you exactly what that modification is. That's because as shipped from the factory, the 1000 RL does not have the select pin connected to the parallel printer port. So there's a jumper you have to add to the motherboard to enable that. First you have to remove this daughter board. You just unscrew it from the top here and it just lifts out. And then you get access to that jumper pin. Right next to the printer port you see pins labeled E2, E3, and E4. What you got to do is add a blob of solder connecting E2 and E3. You may also be able to use one of those conductive circuit trace pens, but I just added a blob of solder. And that enables the select pin to be connected to the printer port, allowing you to use the drive with it. Now I have the drive turned on and connected to my Tandy 1000 RLX. And I could make up some excuse as to why I switched from the RL to the RLX. Such as this one has VGA output so I can use it with an LCD monitor which is easier to film. But the real answer is, for whatever reason, I couldn't get this drive to work with the 1000 RL. Even after following Tandy's instructions about that modification that needs to be done. It did recognize the drive, but whenever I tried to access it, there was no sign of life from the drive itself. It didn't even turn on the LED or spin the disc. And the computer would lock up to such an extent that I couldn't even hit Control alt delete to restart it. I would need to turn it off and turn it back on. And in the 1000 RL setup program, there is an option called Parallel OE. I have no idea what that means. It's normally turned on by default. I tried turning it off but that made no difference. And then just as a sanity check I tried disabling the parallel port and then the driver complained it couldn't find the drive. So that proves the port is working to at least some extent. But I realized I never actually tested the parallel port on the 1000 RL with any other devices. So I connected my Okidata dot matrix printer to the pass-through port on the back of the drive and with that connection I was able to print a text document to the printer so that proves the port is working but for some reason I just can't get the drive to work with it. So that's why I switched to the 1000 RLX and spoiler alert I already tested it and I know it works. And here are the discs I'm going to try using it with. I have a copy of the Chessmaster 2000 on a 360k disc. I'm going to try running that game. I have a blank 360k disc that I'm going to try formatting. And one of the very few high density 1.2 megabyte discs I own. I don't have very many of these because by the time I got a high density 5 and a quarter inch disc drive, at the same time I got a high density 3 and a half inch disc drive, which has higher capacity and obviously the discs are smaller and in my experience more reliable. So I just didn't have a need to use these high density 5 and a quarter inch discs, but I do at least have one here. That I'm going to try using and formatting. And of course I have the three and a half inch disc that I copied the driver software onto. When you unzip the contents of the driver file that you download from the Tandy 1000 archive website, here's what you'll get. And the easy way to install it is just to run the ext setup program it comes with. But if you're not afraid of editing the config.sys file, it's easy to install it manually. Just copy these files to some location on your hard drive and then you add a device command to the config.sys file pointing to the location of the ext drvr.sys file it comes with. In this case I put it in my utilities directory and on the end of it you indicate the drive letter you want to use. In this case the computer only has one floppy drive so I can use the external drive as B. And there's one other option you can add and that's called non-stop. What that does is if you do not have the drive connected or turned on, instead of giving you an error message and waiting for you to press the escape key, it just skips over it and continues. So if you don't intend to have the drive connected and turned on all the time, it's easier to add this non-stop option. And now when you restart the computer, you'll see the message on the screen saying the following Tandy external drive is available. In this case, it's assigned to drive letter B, 5 and a quarter inch, 1.2 megabyte. So now I'll try it with the Chestmaster 2000 disc. 
put it in the drive, type B colon, and bring up a directory. A lot of files on this disk. But to run it, you just type auto exec. And there we go, the Chessmaster 2000 running from the external floppy drive. I'll select RGB color monitor. This game predates VGA, so it's only going to be, I guess, EGA at best. And there it is, the Chess Master 2000 game. And here we go with that high density disc. Let's see what's on it. A lot of file names I don't recognize, but I'll see what's in that first directory DLNY. Oh, there is a program in there. DL. Let's see what that is. Something about lawyers, I would guess. DL Drafting Libraries by Attorneys Computer Network. Are you a sole practitioner? Yes. Enter your name as it should appear in documents. We recommend that you use initial capital letters and end with ESC, which is short for Esquire. So I'll just do V West Life Esquire. Street address. I'll put in their example here 101 Main Street Suite 201 Washington. DC. Uh, what is the zip for that? 20101 or something like that? Telephone number 555-555-1234. Current year. Let's see if this is Y2K compatible. 2021. A dual floppy IBM PC, some other computer with two floppy drives. IBM XD, AT, PS2, or any clone with a hard drive designated as Drive C. So I'll choose that option. Uh, do you wish to use the floppy drive? Usually no. I'll say no. Most people copy the numbers disks into the form subdirectory on the hard disk. Are you going to use or have been using C colon backslash forms to store the numbers disk. Usually yes, I'll say yes. Uh, I don't have any of those installed, but I'll say word perfect. Most law offices traditionally use the larger 10 pitch type, but some law offices prefer the smaller type. It says usually no, so I'll say no. Do you wish to change the default left margin? Answer no. Okay, I'll say no then. So many questions, I'll just use the defaults. Okay, it says been completed. So what did it put it in? It said the forms directory. And well, where did it go? I don't see any new directories on the hard drive. So what did it just put it back on the floppy? Well, whatever, it proves that the floppy drive works. Well, since I don't really care what's on that high density disk, I'll try formatting it. And this is where you may run into another snag. The documentation for the drive says it should work with the normal DOS format command. But when I tried to do it, it just immediately says track zero bad disk unusable. So I have to use the EXT FMT program that it came with to format the disk. 
And now it should work. What? It was just working. Now it works, okay. See, I don't like these high density discs. They're just so much more unreliable than 360K discs. At least now it looks like it's working. Now the format is complete and just as I suspected it did find some bad sectors. So there you go, proof that these high density five and a quarter inch discs are just not that reliable. I don't like using these. You may be wondering, because this drive was made by the same company that made the backpack drives and is basically identical to one, does it work with a backpack driver? And unfortunately the answer is no. As you can see I tried loading the driver for a backpack drive and it just says the drive was not found. Another thing you may be wondering is, since it just uses a standard five and a quarter inch floppy drive with the standard interface cable and power connectors, could you take that drive out and put something else in like a three and a half inch drive or an older 360K five and a quarter inch drive? And initially the answer looks like it could be yes, because if you snoop in the contents of the device driver program for it, you can clearly see it list options for five and a quarter inch 360K, five and a quarter inch 800K, which is not a typical format, five and a quarter inch 1.2 megabyte, three and a half inch 720K, three and a half inch 1.4 megabyte. It even lists three and a half inch 2.8 megabyte and an eight inch drive. And if you look further down in the file where it shows all the settings you can use, there you can see the non-stop option I mentioned earlier. And it has another option where you can specify which port you have it connected to. For example, if you have two parallel ports, you can tell it LPT2 to use the second one. But notice there's an option that says drive type. So let's edit the config sys file and add on the end here, drive type equals 360. And see if that works. But when we restart, even with that drive type set to 360K, it still says 1.2 megabyte. And you may think maybe I just didn't type it correctly. Maybe I need to type like 360K B or something like that. So let's try that. And now it complains that it's unrecognized parameter. So I did have it right the first time. So for whatever reason, even though those options are there for different drive types, it doesn't work. It just permanently set to five and a quarter inch 1.2 megabyte. Now that I proved that the drive works with at least one vintage Tandy computer that it was originally meant to be used with, how about I try using it with a more modern non-Tandy computer? Here is probably one of the newest computers you can use with this drive. It's an IBM ThinkPad T20. It's a Pentium 3 laptop which has a parallel printer port and it's running Windows 98 second edition which is the last version of Windows which supports real mode DOS drivers for devices such as this because I doubt Windows has a plug and play driver for this I also connected a USB three and a half inch disk drive so I can load the driver for this drive but first I'll just try turning it on and letting Windows start up and see if it recognizes this drive at all which I doubt it will Despite what the desktop background may suggest, this is Windows 98 second edition and so far it has not recognized any new hardware. So I'll go into the control panel and I'll click on add new hardware. Again, I'm not expecting this to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Okay, I already knew about these two devices, so those are not new. Uh, no, it's not in that list. Do you want to search for new hardware? Yes. Okay, let's try. And just as I suspected, it didn't find anything, so we'll need to add that driver to the config.sys file, just like we did in DOS. And I actually didn't have a config.sys file on this computer, because Windows 98 just does everything automatically. So I created one, and I inserted this device command. Oh, 
Aha, the following Tandy external drive is available. Drive B, 5 and a quarter inch, 1.2 megabyte. What? Well, it turns out the driver is working on this computer, but as soon as Windows 98 tries to load it, it just craps out and can't access anything on the hard drive. My guess is this is happening because the driver for it is not FAT32 compatible. So if you used it on a Windows 95 or 98 machine where the hard drive is formatted as FAT16, then it probably would work. So I pulled out my Toshiba Satellite 105 CS laptop, which is a Pentium. It's running PCDOS 2000 and Windows 3.11. I installed the driver and it's working fine. So as long as you have a computer that's running pure DOS and it has a fully IBM compatible parallel port and by the way it does not need to be a bi-directional parallel port I still don't know why I couldn't get it to work with the 1000 RL even after doing the modification that Tandy said it should work with but otherwise if you have an old PC that's running DOS and it has a parallel port and you want to add a five and a quarter inch disk drive this would work fine now if you can get one of those backpack drives that would be even better because those actually do have drivers for Windows 95 and 98. At least I've proven that there's nothing Tandy specific about this drive other than the name that's on the front of it. Overall I'm very happy with it because it's a practical solution to add a five and a quarter inch disk drive to a computer that ordinarily only has a three and a half inch disk drive.